What's up? Welcome to the courtroom. I am Theo. And I'm Oj. And in this podcast, we tell the stories about people's life, liberty, and property. Kikwentohan namin kayo about court rulings in a way that will make you understand jurisprudence like a nine-year-old. So join us as we delve into true crime, political controversies, and all things that the cheese every week. The nuptial vows which solemnly intone the matrimonial promise of love, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death to us part are sometimes easier said than done. For many, a marital union figuratively ends on the reaps of matrimonial shoals. In this case, the marriage literally ended under circumstances which the criminal law, disdainful of romanticism, bluntly calls the felony of parricide. Si Ruben Pacbobo, isang middle-aged fisherman at ang kanyang asawa na si Lucia ay mga residente ng barangay Giwanon, Ginatilan, Cebu. Meron silang nine na anak, one of whom died already. Naninirahan ng mag-asawa kasama ang kanilang bunsong anak na si Madeline, anim na taong gulang at isang pamangkin. Habang yung ibang Pacbobo children ay nakikitira sa isang David Manus dahil daw natatakot ang mga ito sa kanilang ama. On the night of March 25, 1991, around 11 p.m., nagising ang batang si Madeline sa ingay ng kanyang magulang na nag-aaway. Maya-maya ay kumuha daw tong si Ruben ng isang hunting knife and bolo. Pinagtataga daw ni Ruben si Lucia sa kanyang paa, leeg, kamay, armpit and breast. Naslice pa nga yung isa pang dibdib ni Lucia. The following morning, nadatnan na lang ni Madeline na patay na ang kanyang nanay na si Lucia at wala na ang kanyang tatay na si Ruben. Actually, may tendency daw talaga to resort to violence to si Ruben. Kwento nga ni Irene, isa sa mga anak ni Ruben at Lucia, during her testimony, one of her fingers was cut and the third finger of her older sister was split by a bolo nung bigla na lang daw sila tinaga ni Ruben. Irene lang daw was able to cover her head, kaya yung daliri niya lang yung nakat. Well, shortly after the gruesome incident, sumuko naman tong si Ruben sa mga otoridad. Umami naman siya sa pagpatay kay Lucia. Kwento niya na bandang alas tres daw na madaling araw, March 25, umuwi daw siya mula sa pangingisda at nagulat daw siya when he saw his wife sleeping with another man who happened to be their neighbor, Cadiz Katulong. Tinangka daw niyang saksakin ang kalaguyo ni Lucia kaso humarang daw itong asawa niya. He also found out that his wife had no panty. Si Lucia daw ang tinamaan ng saksak habang ang kanilang kapitbahay ay tumakas sa bintana. Tinangka daw niya ito hanapin but failed to do so. Pumunta daw agad siya to relate the incident to the police kaso hindi daw siya naka-execute ng affidavit because he was then very confused. Pinabulaanan naman ang kwento ni Ruben ni Polisman Reynaldo Cinco, isa sa mga polis noon sa police station kung saan nag-report si Ruben after the incident. Reynaldo testified that he did not hear Ruben state the reason why he killed his wife and neither did he mention that he came from a fishing activity that night. The prosecutor charged Ruben of parricide and during his arraignment, Ruben pleaded guilty. Accordingly, the trial court rendered judgment finding Ruben guilty as charged and imposing upon him the penalty of reclusion perpetua and indemnification to the heirs. Ruben impugned the trial court's decision for not having appreciated in his favor the mitigating circumstances of passion and obfuscation, voluntary surrender, and voluntary plea of guilty. Kaya naman nag-appeal siya. May mga mitigating circumstances daw kasi so ina-appeal ni Ruben na ma-reduce yung penalty to reclusion temporal. Ano kaya sabi ng Supreme Court? Tama ba yung contention ni Ruben? Did the lower court erred in not appreciating the mitigating circumstance of 
passion and obfuscation, voluntary surrender, and voluntary plea of guilty. Well, bago natin sagutin yan, ano ba muna ang mitigating circumstances and anong bearing nito sa akusado? Mm, mitigating circumstances, galing kasi yan sa word na mitigate or to make something less severe. Makikita yung mga mitigating circumstances under Article 13 of the Revised Penal Code. Example ng mitigating circumstance is yung edad ng perpetrator. Example, yung mga taong over 70 years old. Kung nasa ganyang edad, yung perpetrator or criminal, hindi ibig sabihin justified or exempted na sila sa penalty. Mitigating circumstances does not free the perpetrator from criminal liability. But their age can be considered a mitigating circumstance to reduce the penalty. Aside sa age, isa din sa mitigating circumstance is when a person acted upon an impulse so powerful as naturally to have produced passion or obfuscation. Mga crimes of passion, pero... Paano ba nasasabing ang isang act is a mitigating circumstance of passion and obfuscation? Well, Odge, para masabi na ang isang krimen is within the scope of passion and obfuscation, the following requisites must concur. Una, there should be an act both unlawful and sufficient to produce such condition of mind. Example, ng unlawful act that excites such emotion is yung mahuli mo yung asawa mo na nakikisiping sa ibang tao, oh, di ba? No. The second requisite is that the said act which produced the obfuscation was not far removed from the commission of the crime by a considerable length of time during which the perpetrator might recover from his moral equanimity. Meaning, yung criminal act should immediately follow yung act of obfuscation. Example nga natin, nakita mong may ginagawang milagro yung asawa mo at kalaguyo niya. So, sobrang galit, sakit, at selos, nasaksak mo yung kabit. So, yan, medyo pasok yan sa passion and obfuscation. Kaso, in this case, the Supreme Court noted that Ruben failed to prove by convincing evidence na nakita nga niya si Lucia with another man. As correctly observed by the Solicitor General, parang afterthought na lang yung allegedly adulterous interlude ni Lucia para malesen yung liability niya. The evidence proves the contrary to what Ruben claims na di daw niya inintend patayin si Lucia. The multiple stab wounds, the manner of infliction, and the number of physical injuries negate his claim. Sabi pa ni Ruben sa testimony niya na wala daw panty yung asawa niya but the photograph evidence shows that Lucia was wearing panties. So, ekis na yung mitigating circumstance of passion and obfuscation. How about yung fact na nag-voluntary surrender siya and voluntary plea of guilty. Pwede ba tong magamit to reduce the sentence from reclusion perpetua to reclusion temporal? The SC said no. While they confirm Ruben's compliance with the requisite for the appreciation of voluntary surrender and voluntary plea of guilty, notwithstanding the presence of two mitigating circumstances without any aggravating circumstance, the court provides that reducing the penalty would run counter to the rules for application of indivisible penalties found in Article 63 of the Revised Penal Code. Right. Sabi kasi sa Article 63, in cases where the law prescribes a penalty composed of two indivisible penalties, when the commission of the act is attended by some mitigating circumstance and there is no aggravating circumstance, the lesser penalty shall be applied. In this case, Ruben was found guilty of parricide. The crime of parricide is defined under Article 246 of the Revised Penal Code and imposes the penalty of reclusion perpetua to death. Reclusion perpetua and death are both indivisible penalty. Hence, applying Article 63, when the penalty is composed of two indivisible penalties, the penalty cannot be lowered by one degree, that is reclusion temporal, no matter how many mitigating circumstances are present. Kaya naman, the court ruled that Ruben's appeal for reduced penalty has lack of merit and the assailed judgment of the court was affirmed.
So, pag-usapan natin itong Takbobo Principle Lodge. Kasi may mga decision eh na nag-reverse dito later on. Pero binalik din naman eventually. Kaya nga eh, isa-isahin nga natin, Teo, yung principle discussed here. Under Article 63, Paragraph 2, Number 3, if the penalty prescribed by law is composed of two indivisible penalties tulad ng reclusion perpetua to death and yung act committed is attended by some mitigating circumstance, pero walang aggravating circumstance, yung lesser penalty, which is yung reclusion perpetua, shall apply. Iba to sa Article 64, Number 4, which provides for the rules for application of penalties, which contains three periods, o yung mga divisible penalties. Ito yung mga penalties na nahahati or divisible into three periods, namely maximum, medium, and minimum, tulad ng prison mayor, eh, o di kaya yung reclusion temporal. Sa mga gantong penalties, pwede apply ang mga special mitigating circumstance which required the graduation of penalty by one degree. Now, in the Takbobo principle, the penalty prescribed for parricide is reclusion perpetua to death. Dahil ito ay isang indivisible penalty, it cannot be lowered by one degree or papababain sa reclusion temporal kahit gano'n pa kadami yung mitigating circumstance. Ang gagawin lang is i-apply ang lesser penalty between reclusion perpetua and death. And syempre, reclusion perpetua yun. But as mentioned, na-revise ito in People vs. Serona case in 2004 kung saan the Supreme Court reduced reclusion perpetua to death prescribed for parricide to reclusion temporal because of the attendance of special mitigating circumstances of passion and illness. Dinisigard ng court ang Takbobo principle and applied Article 64 of the RPC in appreciating the mitigating circumstances. Pero syempre, di naman natin i-discuss yung people versus Takbobo kung junk na pala yung jurisprudence, di ba? Kasi in 2017, in the case of people versus Brusola, isang parricide case na may mitigating circumstances of passion and uh, voluntary surrender, syempre, sinight ng accused yung Genosa case in appealing that the penalty of reclusion perpetua to death be reduced to reclusion temporal. However, the Supreme Court, through Justice Leonin, refused to apply the Genosa ruling. So, yun na nga. The SC held that considering that the penalty for parricide consists of two indivisible penalties, which is reclusion perpetua to death, Article 63 daw and not Article 64 yung applicable. Thus, the penalty of reclusion perpetua was imposed. In summary, binalik ng Brusola case yung Takbobo principle. Yon. So, we hope na napay- napaliwanag namin ng maayos yung transition for jurisprudence. Pero if hindi clear, we recommend that you visit the page of Judge Marlo Campanilla, one of the premier authors when it comes to criminal law. Kasi diniscuss niya din doon eh, yung reversion of the Takbobo principle. Also, before we end, there's a new feature on Spotify pala that allows our listeners to rate our show. So, courtmates, if you want to support us and help us keep doing this kind of content, we invite you to rate us 5 stars so we can reach more people. That's right. Feel free to message us as well. We'd love to hear your insights about this case. Or let us know what cases you would like us to chika for our next episode. If you guys like our podcast, please don't forget to rate us 5 star and subscribe for free on Spotify or whatever you're listening to right now. You can also watch the audiogram version of this podcast on Facebook and YouTube. Again, this is Oj and Theo leaving you with a reminder to always look back in history because precedence shall rule the future. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again in the courtroom. Bye!